great news, your bank is about to lose tons of money in a doomsday scenario, the Fed says. Now, if that's not uh, a clickbait headline, I don't know what is. But if you're just joining in, my name is Christopher Ewell, and I love talking about stocks and finding those outlier trades with outsized returns. And if you're interested in that too, be sure to definitely hit the subscribe button down below. And before I forget, today's episode is sponsored by Outlier.com. Go to OVTLYR.com to find out why outliers win. Now, let's take a look at this, right? This is a very sensational headline. Big U.S. banks would lose $541 billion in a doomsday scenario. Uh, I was reading through some some Twitter comments about this, and somebody was saying, you know what, if there really is a doomsday scenario, dollars don't matter. <laughs> but the annual stress tests, so this is something they do every year, show lenders with more than enough capital to weather economic catastrophe. Wait a minute here, this is conflicting headlines. Are we going to lose $541 and it's a problem, or is there more than enough capital to weather economic catastrophe? Well... I have a personal insight on this because I do work with this every single day. Uh, I do consulting with credit unions. And one of the things that I know about is that these stress tests are conducted monthly, quarterly, and annually. So this is nothing new to these banks. In fact, they get this done, like I say, monthly at the very least frequent. And they're looking at this thinking, uh, or very most frequent, I should say. They're looking at this thinking, why is this headline even a thing? Because they know well ahead of time how much their earnings are expected to be given any range of interest rates, right? If the interest rate stays where it's at, they know exactly how much they're going to make. If rates go up 300 basis points or go down 300 basis points or anything in between, they know exactly how much they're going to make and they know how much it's going to go down to their bottom line. So a sensational headline like this uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, scrolling through this real quick, it did say that um, they would lose $541 billion in a hypothetical doomsday economic scenario, but still have more than enough capital to absorb the losses, according to annual stress tests. The passing grades were given by the Fed to banks including J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs. And let's take a look at J.P. Morgan Chase here real quick inside of the outlier data. Uh, it actually had a sell signal back on June 26th. Um, if I were looking at this, I would say that was more of a profit, take profit signal versus a, uh, a sell short signal. And, you know, maybe it was anticipation in what these, uh, results would be that we got the data to come through on there. Um, oh, here's, here's the, uh, the Twitter comments that I was reading here, but small banks on the other hand, um, they're leaving some things off of their call report. Now a call report is a uh, standardized report that all financial institutions have to produce. And by doing so, you can actually go through and compare dollars to donuts, who's doing okay and who's not doing okay. And uh, the small banks on the other hand are not doing quite so well. So do me a favor in the comments down below, are you nervous about a financial collapse? And if you are, what has made you nervous about this? I'm very, very curious to see. Um, and are you, are you concerned about losing your bank losing $541 billion. I'll give you a hint real quick. Most of these that we're talking about are multi-trillion dollar banks. So $541 billion, it's only a drop in the bucket to them. And this is a cumulative number. So yeah, like I say, this was a very sensational headline. So do me a favor down below. If you like the video, if you like JP Morgan Chase, if you like the financial sector, hit the like button. And like I say, put in the comments down below, are you concerned about your bank out there? A lot of people are concerned, especially with the fact that when rates have been rising, some banks have not been able to weather the storm because their investments are losing money. And when their investments lose money, then all kinds of problems start to happen. But that's not what we're talking about here. So we're talking about um, economic stressors, not necessarily if their investments were to go down.